Hey again guys, you know, it's been an awful long time since we've taken a look at any frame arms kits, so I think it's time to take a look here at the frame arms Congo kit, which as you can see is in this very large box, a very cool design. It's sort of a mix of battleship and robot kind of all in one. So it's got some interesting features, no doubt, and it's going to be a very unique build in the frame arms line. I'm really looking forward to checking this one out. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we've got some awesome box art here. You can see this is number 42 in the frame arms line. So awesome, huge illustration there of the Congo 100 scale full action plastic model kit. And there you can see our pre-assembled frame architect or architect frame in there. Pre-assembled ones uh, usually a little bit more unstable than the ones you build yourself, so we'll see how that goes. But there's that in that little cutout there on the box. Just going around here on the size of the box. Over here you can see what the kit is going to look like built up in its robot form, front and back. So very detailed, lots of really cool design aspects going on there. And then of course it does transform into the half battleship, half robot kind of looking form right there. Honestly, it's kind of silly. I don't really like it that much, but it's interesting, it's unique. It's different, so there's a couple of look, some detailed shots of that. Over around here on the other side, a look at its weapons, which are very cool. I really love, it's kind of one of the main things that I really love so much about this is its beam bazooka here. Super cool design for that. The rapid fire gun and the shield there on the other arm. Some cool weapons and the unpainted samples. Here's how it's going to look straight out of the box. And it looks great, just straight out of the box. And obviously the colors, the details, the color separation is all going to be looking very nice even just straight out of the box. The list price for this one over here, you can see is 7,800 yen, so around 75, 80 dollars for this. As you can see, it's a, it's a big box, so it's not a bad price for this kit at all, I don't think. And if you guys have never built any frame arms kits, they are in 100 scale, which is a common size for Gunpla, of course, but they're not exactly the same size necessarily as 100 scale Gunpla, but they are pretty close. So they kind of, there is some difference between the different frame arms kits. Uh, some of them are a little bit larger, some of them are a little bit smaller, but in general they are pretty close to about the same size as your standard, like average 100 scale Gundam kit. So we'll take a look at all the runners in a moment. Let's just go ahead and check out the manual here first, which just features a big photograph of the kit there on the front. On the back, some really cool line art of the kit there, so that's great to have. If you want to you know, scan this in your computer, you can use this for testing out different color schemes and stuff, so always great to see that. Our color guide is up there at the top, so pretty basic, just different grays for the most part for this, and a little bit of red in there. That's kind of the majority of the colors. Inside the menu, we've got our parts list here. A whole bunch of parts, obviously, you can see we've got a bunch of runners there, and then just goes through all the construction. And then once we get through the weapons, then about the transformation here. So how to transform it into the ship mode. And really, that is about it for the manual. So unfortunately, no other like sample photographs or anything like that, it's just what you got on the outside of the box is all you get, so let's just go ahead and move on then to runners. So first off, real quick, we do have some polycaps here, PCA and then PC for just these polycaps in this kind of interesting, slightly reddish, purplish, gray kind of color, it's an odd color. And then our pre-built architect frame and all of the frame parts are going to be in that same color. This here, obviously, just going to be coming apart even as I'm taking it out of the box, but yeah, so we'll see how well that holds up once we actually start getting the kit all built together. Runner A here in this uh, slightly purplish, kind of tinted, off-white, very light gray color. It looks very nice anyway for a main color for this. We've got some armor pieces there. Runner B in this dark gray, and kind of all of the parts have a slight purplish tint to them, which is kind of interesting. And same thing goes for this one, but dark gray parts here for the B runner. Runner C, some very large parts for our ship shape pieces there. And some more of that light purplish gray color here on the D runner as well. We've got two of these. Runner E going to be our one runner here that is in pure white, so there's a few pieces there. Runner F in this really nice shade of kind of dark red, looks very good. Runner G, some more kind of inner frame pieces in that slightly purplish reddish. Some more of that here on the H runner as well. And continued on to the I runner. Also we've got two of this I runner. Runner J then going back to our dark gray color, we got some pieces on there for looks like, I don't know, some little detail bits and then obviously the main pieces there for the beam bazooka. Runner K here in a, another different shade of dark gray, we've got two of this K runner. Runner L is in this off-white cream color, looks very nice. And runner M is in this clear fluorescent green part there for the visor. And finally runner V is our standard frame arms hands part, so we got open hands, closed fists, and holding hands. 
All right, guys, so there you go. As you can see, there is a good amount of parts in there, but honestly, the box is not that full at the end of the day, so I feel like they probably could have put this in a smaller box than what they did. Uh, but I don't know, I guess the larger box does certainly have an appeal to it as well, too. So let me get this all built up, and then we'll see how it looks. All right, guys, here it is all built up, and yeah, pretty unique with those big, massive ship panels on there and just the robot design as well too looking you know just really super unique with those weird kind of shape through kind of like bones sort of reminiscent kind of shapes all around the outside of it it's a very strange mix of the shapes of armor going on there you've got those really weird angular ones and you've got the really blocky square pieces of armor like on the shoulders and the chest and you've got rounded pieces of armor on like the knees and the center of the chest and so design wise it seems a little bit all over the place it seems a big mishmash of design aesthetics kind of going on with the armor there but i mean it's up to you i mean i think it kind of works to a degree i'm not sure how much i really love the kit but it'll all come down to i think posing the kit and it has again some really awesome accessories which i absolutely love I'll hold off my judgment on this too soon, but as you can see, I mean, like, the colors are really cool, all the details, it's got a ton of detail on there, so, like, if you just wanted to panel line this kit up and then just throw some top coat on there, I think it'd be looking great, even just straight out the box. You'd do a little bit of detail painting on there maybe as well too, but nice looking kit just in terms of the actual parts and details and everything there. Right, so first up, accessory-wise, you have a couple of different parts here that are going to be used for the transformation, so hang on to those. And for hand options, you've got your set of closed fists there for the left and the right side. You also have a set of open hands and holding hands that are, again, just all standard frame arms hands, except for, in this case, the backs of the hands are different from the standard ones that are included in there. But you do have the standard backs as well. If you prefer those, you can use them instead. Then we have the shield, which is comprised of a few different parts here. So this part here on the top, this kind of cannon, that can move. You can change the angle of that. You can also rotate that. You can also take this off of here if you didn't want to plug this onto somewhere else on the kit or onto a different kit or something. Whatever, it's just your standard attachment point there. And then on the underside, you have this Gatling gun here. Now you can change the angle of this and you could remove that, but the attachment point is not the same. It's just like a non-standard just like a square attachment point for that. So you could remove this and plug it onto something else, but you'd have to do some modification for that. But the molding of that, the detail of the little Gatling gun is quite nice. This is your connection piece here, which you can sort of change the angle of. You can also rotate that a little bit. And then you have this big kind of canister piece up there at the top as well too. Otherwise, it's all just a pretty cool looking shield here. Then we have the beam bazooka, which is awesome looking. You have this separate piece here at the end and on the top here to give you a little bit of color separation, which is nice. Of course, the red canister on the front of this also looks really nice as well too. As you can see, you have a few points of where you might want to plug the handle in, either onto the left or the right side. It's easy enough to swap that onto either side if you want. So you have three points uh, where you can plug that in as far as like where you want the handle to be forward and back. You also have an attachment point here, a hard point down on the bottom side of this. So if you wanted to attach this onto the top of a stand or something or onto the top of somewhere or you want to attach something else onto the bottom of this gun or something, you can do that. But a very cool, very nice gun here. The trouble is, unfortunately, once you have these weapons actually in hand and attached, is that the shoulders are kind of weak and not going to be able to support the weight of them on either side, unfortunately there. And if you guys have built any frame arms kits before, you know that kind of the shoulder joint of the architect frame is often a weak point. Another weak point would be the waist joint, basically connecting the top and bottom half of the body. That one's a little bit better in this case, and also the ankles are kind of okay in this case, another kind of common weak point, but the shoulders are definitely gonna be a killer for this one, just because it has these big, cool weapons, and you're just gonna have to kind of fight the pose you wanna do with them because you're not able to actually get that to be held up at an angle. Now, obviously that's a pretty easy fix, so I don't wanna overblow that as a huge problem. It's pretty easy to fix. You just put some glue on the joint, whatever, and it's uh, fairly easy to remedy that. But just so you guys are aware ahead of time, that's something that you're going to have to do, you're gonna to wanna to do for this to be able to really take advantage of those awesome weapons that it has. And just for a quick size comparison there, you can see it compared with your standard 1100 scale master grade Gundam kit. So again, as you can see, it's kind of roughly about the same size, a little bit shorter in this case, but there's some variance between the different frame arms kits. So they're generally about the size of a kind of a little bit smaller MG. And then here is the boat form. It's pretty unique. It's pretty silly, I gotta say. I, I, I don't think I'll ever transform this again after this review, but uh, it's very unique. Yeah, there's certainly that that you can say about it. And obviously open for customization here as well too. You can have uh, different stuff 
post it up on top of the shoulder or a missile launcher or something like that. Also, there's hard points on the top of the backpack and the top of the back skirt as well too for adding on more like armament or equipment or ammunition or something like that onto the back there that you could add. You could really go wild with this, I think. But anyway, so overall guys, I mean, it's not an all bad kit, but it just certainly does have its issues. Now, just the design issues in general is just gonna be the first thing you're gonna have to get past. But if you like the design, then the kit itself, I think, you know, in terms of just the, like I said before, the color separation, the details, all of that is really good on it. The next hurdle then, of course, is just the weight issue shoes and posing the kit is going to give you some trouble again a pretty easy fix on that so that's not a huge thing to get over uh, as again if you're a fan of the design then you know doing a little bit extra effort to be able to actually totally utilize the design i think is not a big ask and then of course there's just the price as well too the kit is pretty pricey you know if you're comparing this to like a bandai mask or something like that and i think that's a pretty common thing that people do with when it comes to frame arms kits they compare it to how much gumpla they could buy for the same price as what they're paying for for whatever x frame arms kit and i think that's a fair enough assumption I think that's a fair enough uh, way to look at it, but at the same time, I mean, Kotobukiya, it's a different company. So I mean, it's a, if you're comparing two different products made by Bandai, I think that'd be a different story. But Kotobukiya, I mean, there's a, a lot of different reasons why there's a difference in price for them. I won't really get into it, but I mean, Rather than comparing cost value of frame arms and gunpla, I think you should just look at it as, is it a design that you like? Does it, is it something that looks cool to you? Is it something that's worth the price to you? And not necessarily, is it worth the same amount of gunpla? I don't know, you know. I just think if there's a frame arms design that you really like and you're willing to pay the price for it, then I would say go for it. But if not, you know, then by all means buy some buy some gunpla. But if you've never built any frame arms kits, I would recommend checking them out at some point because they are pretty cool, very unique. They do take a little bit more work uh, in most cases and you know, cost and availability, all this stuff you have to take into consideration. But uh, if you have the means and if you're curious, I would definitely recommend checking out the line at some point because they are pretty fun to work on. I, I like them despite their sometimes being a, a little bit flawed in terms of their stability and things like that. But again, these are all things that are e pretty easily enough to work around. So that's my thoughts on the kit. Let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. Have you built this or the other variant of this? There's another one, I forget the name of it offhand, but there's two that are kind of similar anyway. But that's gonna be it for today. So if you guys want to check out some different frame arms kits uh, and or Gumpla or anything else, of course, you guys can check the link to a USA Gundam store that's down in the video description below. Uh, check all the stuff out there and what we got in stock. And also you can use my coupon code there, Zacharilius10 to save 10% off anything you find there on the store. So by all means, go ahead and use that as well too. Save yourself a little bit of money. And thank you guys all so much for liking the video, commenting, subscribing, all that is greatly appreciated if you found the video helpful or, or anything. I uh, do really appreciate the support, guys. Until next time, I hope you're all having a great day. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.